this is the uh, second part of these uh, videos for the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And now we're going to finally get in and talk about how do you actually calculate these things. So again, I'll repeat the goals from the last video. Uh, define eigenvectors and eigenvalues again, and I'll just go through and do some examples. Try to demonstrate uh, how this thing works. So again, by the end of this, you should be able to uh, figure out the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a matrix if I give you the matrix. If I give you uh, the matrix and the eigenvalue and eigenvectors, you should be able to confirm uh, that they are eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And we're going to define something called the eigenspace of a matrix, and you should be able to figure out what that is. So again, we have this definition. Um, if we have a matrix A, then if I take A times V and I get V back, but I scale it by some number lambda, then this V is the eigenvector, and this lambda is the eigenvalue. So this is saying I have a matrix A. I can find this special lambda and V so that A times V points in the exact same direction, but it's just scaled by some amount lambda. Right, so this is saying if I've got the vector v, then if lambda is real and bigger than 1, a times v is going to be along in the same direction but just longer. If this lambda is less than 1, I should say less than 1 in absolute value, then it's going to be pointing in the same direction but shorter. If this lambda is real and negative, then these directions are going to be flipped 180 degrees and it's going to point in the opposite direction. So and you should uh, go through and read your book. They have a list of a lot of very nice examples. Okay, so let's con just confirm and check some things here. So suppose I have this matrix and I want to confirm whether or not this is an eigenvector. So what do I have? If I take this matrix times this vector, I'm going to have minus 32 plus minus 36 times minus 1 is plus 36. And I'm going to have 30 minus 34. So what is that? That is going to be 4 and minus 4. Likewise, over here, what am I going to have? I'm going to have minus three, 32 times 6, minus 36 times 5. Oh, it's going to be an awful mess. Got to be careful here. That's going to be plus because it's 32 times minus 32 times minus 6. Now here, this is going to be 30 times minus 6 plus 5 times 34. So what's going to happen here? This result is going to give me 4 minus 4, but notice if I factor out a 4, I get the same vector. So this is v1. I have a v1 equals 4 v1. So the eigenvalue is 4, and v1 is the eigenvector associated with 4. Over here, if I go through and work that all out, I'm going to get 12 minus 10. So you notice if I pull out a negative 2, this becomes a minus 6, 5. Right? So if I multiply that minus 2 through there, I get the same thing. So in this case, I get an eigenvalue of minus 2. The corresponding eigenvector is minus 6, 5. Right? So in this case, we know Oops, that should be a 4. We can figure out, or we can confirm that this is an eigenvector. We can find its eigenvalue. We can confirm that this is an eigenvector, and we can find its eigenvalue. Let's take another example. Suppose we have this matrix, and now what do I have here? I'm going to have 6 times 2 plus 6 times minus 1 going to be 
minus 3 times 2, minus, a minus 3 times minus 1, which gives me a plus 3. So that's going to be a 6 minus 3. So if this is v1, I can factor out a 3 to get 2 minus 1. So the eigenvalue associated with the eigenvector 2 minus 1 is 3. Likewise over here, what do I get? I'm going to get 6 times minus 1. It's minus 6 plus 6. It's going to be minus 3 times minus 1 is 3. Plus minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. And that's going to give me 0, 0. So what do we have here? We have the eigenvector v1 is minus 1, 1. Notice this is 0 times the original vector. So the associated eigenvalue is 0. And what do we say here? V, oops, this is V2. Let me just re, no, oh, I'm sorry. Let me be consistent with what I said before. So this should be V2 and lambda 2. This is V1 and lambda 1. So what we say is this is 3. One thing to note here, see these column vectors are uh, linear combinations of one another. If I tell you that a v2 is 0, this immediately tells you, and I tell you, i got to be careful, v2 is not the 0 vector. This immediately tells you that the columns of a are linearly dependent. So this matrix is not invertible. So the inverse doesn't exist. And that's going to be true in general, is that if lambda is, uh, if one of your eigenvalues is 0, it's going to imply that you can find a vector where a times v is 0, which means that the null space is non-trivial, which means this matrix is not invertible. So knowing this, is another way to get some uh, important information about this matrix. All right, quick result. Um, suppose you know that the eigenvectors of a matrix exist, and they have eigenvalues that are all different from one another. So we would say they're distinct. Let's play a game. Let's suppose that as I go from v1, v2, v3 to vj minus 1, that those vectors are linearly independent and they have distinct eigenvectors. Now I'm going to add one more. And if I add one more eigenvector, let's pretend that it's not linearly independent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that we get something that's uh, inconsistent with this statement, that they have uh, different eigenvector or eigenvalues which is going to imply then that these uh, from v1 to vj have to be linearly independent. Okay, so I'm going to assume that they're not, show that I get a bad result, which is going to, means that this assumption cannot be correct. So let's see. So I'm going to suppose I've got v1, v2, those things are linearly independent. Right, so if I give you a set of vectors, at some point, some subset have to be linearly independent. I'm going to add v sub j. And I'm going to assume, well, I shouldn't say assume. I'm given that all these eigenvalues are distinct. So the question now is, does this mean that v sub j has to be linearly independent. So assume it's not the case. Assume that this is linearly dependent. If that's the case, this vj I can write as a linear combination of the uh, previous eigenvectors. Okay. Now suppose I'm going to take a times vj. If I do that, 
what's going to happen? I'm going to get a1, av1 plus a2, av2 a3, av3, so I can distribute that. Because these are eigenvectors, I know this is going to be lambda j, vj. This is going to be lambda 1, v1. And this is going to be, let's see, uh, a2, lambda 2, v2. This is going to be a3, lambda 3, v3, right? Because they're eigenvectors, I know that a times any vk equals lambda k vk. That's the definition that we have. OK. I'm going to assume that lambda j is not 0. And I can do that because um, if lambda j is 0, that means that a1, a2, a3, all these have to be 0 because I know that the v1, v2, v3s have to be linearly independent. So I can divide through to get v sub j. I can divide by lambda j. I do that, this now this expression now becomes every term, but each term is divided by lambda j. Like so. So now where are the two equations? I've got this equation and this equation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract these. So if I subtract this equation from this equation vj minus vj is the zero vector. And I'm going to have a1. So now this is going to be 1 minus lambda 1 over lambda j v1. So that comes from taking this term, subtracting this term. Now if I take this term, and subtract this term, they both have an a2. That's a 1 minus lambda 2 over lambda j, v2. Finally, this term and this term can be a3, 1 minus lambda 3 over lambda j, v3, v3. And that keeps going on and on until I get to this term aj minus 1, I'm going to have 1 minus lambda j minus 1, lambda j, vj minus 1. Now I'm I've been given that all of these lambdas are different. So these are not all equal to 0. They can't all be equal to 0. And I just said that v1, v2 up to vj minus 1 are linearly independent. So the only way this can be true is if all the a's are 0, which is then saying, and since this vj is not 0, this is basically saying I cannot write this equation right here. So that equation can't possibly be written in that form without violating the condition that I was given that these lambdas are different. So that means that v1, v2, vj minus 1, and then if I add this vj to that set, it still has to be linearly independent if its eigenvalue associated with this is different from all the others. Okay, so that's fine. It also gives us this, is that if I've got a square matrix, because of this because these things are linearly independent, they're all different in terms of the eigenvalues. The largest set of linearly independent vectors that I can uh, create in Rn, because this is an n by n matrix, right? these vectors are in Rn, 
I can't get more than n linearly independent vectors of these, so this is the maximum number of eigenvectors I can find. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about what that means, but um, that's going to put a limit to how many of these I can actually find. Okay, and we're going to find out that uh, we can have a situation where we can have this n or less eigenvectors associated with the eigenspace. So be careful, it's not always equal to n, it's got to be at most n. 